Dear friends, welcome to this class on uh, enumerations in C, popularly known as enums. Enumerations are one of the user-defined data types. So let's get started on this class. As part of the agenda, I am going to talk about what is enums or enums in C language. We'll also discuss, discuss why do we require enums? Is it mandatory or does it solve certain problem? Okay. Having covered that, then we'll talk about syntax of enums in C language. And then we'll cover a little bit about the differences um, between enums and macros. Followed by certain practical examples of enums in the Linux kernel. So let's get uh, started on this uh, topic on enums in C language, right? So what is an enum? As far as the language is concerned, C language is concerned, enum is a named integer constant. So as part of your programming, if you want to define certain important, certain important values, which are important for your source code so you can define those values primarily using capital letters and then you're defining their name and give some values sometimes the values are meaningful and sometimes the values can be meaningless okay so when you talk about enumerations or enums in c we are generating enums means we are generating a sequence right enumeration we are enumerating it so it specifies a set of values that a variable of a given enum type can take so you declared one enum data type and then what are the integer constants so they are constants so what are the integer values that it can take that is what is a enum how do we do that we specify the keyword enum the moment we specify the keyword enum on the beginning of a line we are now kind of you know defining as you new user defined data type okay so why do we require an enum enums are primarily used in the programming for program readability and maintainability it helps a lot in terms of maintaining a program so we will give some live example about it before that it's good to look into the syntax the data type how we are defining it because by looking into some of these examples we can easily understand them whether enums can be good for readability or not okay so let's look into the syntax so when you see this enum when you see this particular enums what you will find out is enum is the type sorry it's a it's a way to start it's a keyword and then you are defining a type here followed by the enumeration list. So in this, you are going to discuss about what are the various integer constants where you have given some names to them and then you can define certain variables. Looking into the example further, we have declared enum called a day. So it's a day of a week. Uh, it can be any day of a week. Okay. So you just want to enumerate them Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all the days of a week. So seven days are there, right? Basically, if you have seven days of a week, you just start with whichever day you would have wanted. So let's start with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then go on. Now, what you have done is you have generated seven constants, integer constants, and then the, the rule is the first one, which is the Sunday in this example, the first integer constant. If you don't specify any explicit value, the value is zero. So this value will have an integer value zero, and this value is always, the next value is always previous plus one. So this value, since it was zero, it will become one, then, then two, then three, four, five, six. Right? So here, there is no need for us to explicitly define them with certain values in another way. Another way means without using enum. Okay? We can use it a macro, but macro you might have to define seven macro definitions and then you have to specify a value for each one of them. Okay, so we'll cover some more differences about, you know, macro versus enum a little later, but just think at this moment, which would have, which, which solution is more elegant? If you use enum, you just define in a single line all, all the integer values. So here really the meaning is also integer, 
macro you are defining seven top down with some values okay so they are not integers also max macro is a character sequence right so this looks easily more readable and maintainable as compared to macro so how do you use them enum day and then you say today today is a local variable or a global variable so when you say today is today sunday so in your programming you can say if today double equal to sunday is today equals to sunday today equals to monday so it becomes more readable because maybe you are writing an application software which is more focused on a day of a week right so some sort of a software where you know you are using this so it's it's good it allows us to you know uh, give a name to the days instead of saying 0 1 2 3 like we just compare with the meaningful name that's how the program readability uh, gets uh, increased many fold the next one is coin so think about a coin like your penny or a nickel or a dime or a quarter half dollar dollar so if you're writing some financial software for say us so there, you know, they use this currency, you know, denominations as an example, not all of them are valid, but as an example, okay. So you can define, enumerate those currency for a particular geography. In this case, it's a US. And then you say enum coin money. So you're declaring a variable called money and it is our type enum coin, right. So what happens here is you are really declaring an enumeration and then you are declaring the collection the list and then a variable let's move on to the next slide how do we assign values to this enum as i mentioned just a while ago that by default the first integer constant will have a value of 0 so the next one is previous value plus 1 so this will be 1 we can also explicitly assign the values if we wanted whenever we do that the next value is always previous value plus 1 okay so when you do like this you will see that penny 0 nickel is 1 dime we have hard coded to 10 quarter we have hard coded 20 half dollar will be previous value plus 1 because we did not do any hard coding explicit assignment and similarly the dollar becomes 27 so the values of of, of these uh, integer constants are this in the same order how they were declared in this enum coin declaration so the next thing for us to understand is enum versus macro just a couple of minutes ago I, I gave you an example you know if you are going to define Sunday Monday Tuesday though all those weekdays seven weekdays we can use a macro definition or we can use an enum okay so there are certain things we need to consider the first one is enums are supported by the C language so enums are created for the language itself right it's part of the language whenever you think about macro they are basically preprocessor c preprocessor directives okay these directives generally have a lot of general meaning one of the thing is they are they don't have any data types right so they are just some sort of a text string so if you have lots and lots of uh, integer constants to be defined so we can use enum suppose you have 20 integer constants to be defined you can define enum you can explicitly assign certain values to some of them if needed but when you have to explicitly define a lot of these macros, so it's a very large top down, you know, write up that you have to do in terms of macro definitions, okay, which is fine, not a major problem. And then you have to explicitly turn on, explicitly assign values to each one of these, to each one of these macro definitions, right. So sometimes it's a little bit of a drag in the coding because macros are for preprocessor, you know, so it, it gives us some way to do conditional coding, some additional inclusions, various things. But enums are primarily defined for readability of the program. It's part of the language. Okay. So given a choice, yes, enum is a better one because it improves the readability and it saves space and time. It's auto initialized. They're integer. They have a meaning. They're integer constants. Okay. Macro, you have to do a lot of extra work for that. Having said that, you can do programming using both enum and macro, but enum is generally preferred. Okay. So now let's look into some examples of enums, right? So I have got few examples where, you know, we are really using it into the kernel. Okay. 
So sometimes uh, you can see this particular example about enums where we are talking about the status of the uh, power status. Okay, it's about the hardware power status. So we can define state as 0, 1 up to 7 and then maybe some invalid states, right? So there, here is just creating an enum and the name of that type is uh, state, power state, right? So this is one place where you can make use of, you know, enum as one choice in the previous case, right? The next one that you can see is basically all the registers that have been used uh, in terms of uh, some of the GDB related, you know, programming environments, okay? Now, this is not the full list I have created. I have just taken from the kernel source code. So, you have register names. So, GDB, AX, PX, CX, so on, so forth. And it is dot, 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 which means there are more register. There are more registers for the uh, GDB uh, emulation or simulation, okay? But, yeah, you can use, you could have used uh, has defined macros, but that does not, you know, um, look so good because there are so many of them. And then they have implicit values automatically. If we have not assigned it, implicitly they are starting with zero, right? So kernel, we have a kgdp.h. So you can see uh, two use case examples in this case where both are using enums. Kernel, we have lots of enums, okay? A lot of component, they use enums in the kernel, right? Another one I have taken from the drive device driver. In this case, is a BLK layer, block IO layer, okay? So they have generated an enum for their... Um, block IO. We don't have to worry about what does it mean. I'm just giving you some usage example and pattern. So there they're doing a left shifting, right shift, all the shifting here and somehow doing an OR operations and sending some edits and then setting some additional constants, right? So you can see they are somehow doing bitwise shifting and then doing an OR and then hard coding some values. The interesting thing about this enum is there is no new enum name so they are just creating some nice way of you know in a block they are just creating a integer constant for their 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 block driver code actually you can see that you don't have any suffix you don't have any name here for enum right so they just created this integer constants in the blk layer block layer okay similarly uh, there are many examples uh, i thought i will give some variations for the example so another variation is again enum here but there is no name, user-defined names here. So they are somehow creating this integer constants with a value 0 and all of a sudden 1 uh, followed by a 4. So something they have skipped here. So this is about, you know, caching policies on the page cache, you know. So this is another usage model. So what you see generally in the kernel, right, you can search for enums and you will see, oh, so many enums are used because enums are allowing us to create a named constant named integer constant that itself is a very good you know usage uh, property basically right so kernel uses it quite a lot just to give you a final cut example on this you can always go to the kernel source code many of you might be seeing i'm using this source code quite a lot okay so i think you should download the source code find and then you can go into this text string and say enum right so you can just put the keyword enum and if you search in the database there are 25,000 places in, in this version of the kernel that I have okay in which they are making use of enums so enums are used extensively uh, in C programming I hope uh, this uh, small video discussion on enum would help you would have helped you in understanding C language and how to use it how to use the enums thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. We have put important links in the description and the comment section below. If you really enjoyed our video, please press the like button below. We plan to release one video per week. So go ahead and subscribe to Sand Foundry by pressing the subscribe button below and turning on the notification bell.